Hey everybody, welcome back to the Medbros channel and all three of us are back with another video. Hello. Hello. <laughs> That's why we're cringy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so we're all on summer vacation right now, so you guys are going to be seeing a lot of videos coming out on the channel, both our channel and Corby's channel, so make sure you guys are subscribed. So in today's video, we're just going to be going on to threads of the kind of what are my chances threads that people constantly post when they're trying to apply to med school, and we are going to be giving our opinions on what we think the admissions committee would say in response to a thread. So unauthorized, <laughs> unedited, <laughs> non-official. Yeah. Probably inaccurate opinions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, to make it sound a little more official, what we're going to be doing is looking at some of the uh, posts that maybe even you guys watching have posted on what are my chances, and you guys put up your stats, etc. So just another point, we don't think we're some type of crazy like know-it-all, so obviously this is just our opinion, but we do have three different opinions with three different people, so I probably will have different opinions than Shaman and Herman, and also this is constantly what we get in our DMs of people asking us, do you think I have a chance to get into med school, do you think, like it's literally non-stop I think in all of our private messages mm -hmm. and emails. <laughs> Alright, for all the haters who are going to come at me saying I'm pretentious, I don't deserve, I don't deserve to be giving any advice, <laughs> he came up with the idea of please direct all hate yeah, towards Instagram, towards uh, Harmon BH. So to add some credibility, all three of us have heard discussions of what goes on at admissions committees, we've heard professors, I had friends that have been on the committee, I've been, you know, involved in these discussions ourselves so we have a pretty good idea of what these admission committees are looking for but we're also going to do a little twist in this video on if we would agree with that and what are our opinions on your applications let's okay. get started so let's get right into it guys all right so our first candidate walked through the door he gave me his paper here's what it looks like his overall gpa 3.68 his science gpa 3.54 um, a downward trend on that science GPA. His MCAT was a 514. Um, he was born in California, ethnicity white, undergrad institution, top public university in the UC system. Um, clinical experience, he volunteered at some clinics, a health fair screener. Um, he has what, 100 hour chart review, 250 hours monthly at NIH, 200 hours microbiology research, um, in a lab, what is it, a poster presentation, um, doesn't seem like any publications here, um, shadow experience, um, a couple hours here and there, um, and that's, and other extracurricular activities, um, just a couple of random things. Overall, just after reading it, uh, I think pretty, pretty good GPA, like that's not a bad GPA, especially mm -hmm. since he said his overall at the end of it all was 3.68, that's a pretty competitive that's GPA. That's really good, yeah. Um, I definitely think the downward trend is a little bit a la hit because it does kind of show that you struggled, right, going into a more competitive environment, and that's what medical school is, you're going to a very competitive environment, mm -hmm. so they might look badly on that. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say that MCAT is pretty good. Um, MCAT's great. So. This I found was a little bit something that stood out to me is that he designed and conducted an informational interview study and retrospective chart review for work of 250 hours mm -hmm. and that was a poster presentation. Sounds like an independent project. Right. Yeah, but again, is. no publication. I mean, I could put together a poster and present it yeah, somewhere. But a lot of people don't have publications in college, but mm -hmm. this is much more than a lot of people have in terms of research. Yeah. Like, this is the amount of hours he put. Like, yeah, 200 hours. He put in like 5,000 hours. I haven't told them up, but that's you what it looks like. No, he's self-reported those hours. That doesn't matter how many hours you do. I he guess said so. he was first author of a poster presentation. First uh, two author. undergrad first research papers. It's definitely something I'll say. That's definitely yeah. something. That's For something sure. that stood out to me. Alright, so that is our first applicant. So let's go down the let's go down the list. What do you think of them? I would say that um, because I think just it unfortunately comes down to for the top tier schools like does this person have anything crazy extracurricular wise I would say that they don't hop out at me and I think that would be the general consensus there's nothing that makes me go like yes Harvard like Agreed. right and also stats wise yes they're competitive but they also aren't like top top tier as crappy as that sounds like that's kind of how things are defined um, so I would say that top tier schools are probably a little bit out of the picture a little bit more of a reach for this person, like top 10 or top 20. Um, this person though was shooting for uh, University of Mississippi, which I'm not too familiar with their stats, but um, it's an in-state public, mm -hmm. which kind of uh, makes me feel like it's probably more in-state friendly. Mm -hmm. So that's a good um, 
thing to look at for his application. And one of the things I noticed was out of state public, he's shooting for UC Davis and UC Irvine. And from my experience with these schools, they're very, very local friendly. Mm -hmm. So I think those factors also play a role, so that would probably play a role into his admissions. But I would say stats wise, he's pretty, pretty good on the playing field for getting into a medical school. Pretty accurate. I think the stats are good. They're not exceptional, um, but they are good. Like in the extracurriculars, there wasn't any, like, I didn't see any big picture behind all of them, right? Like this guy is doing all of this stuff. And there was no like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, story behind yeah. it. It was just like basketball is um, exactly. this, that. And um, good, it'll look good on your application, but um, it's nothing exceptional. Mm -hmm. um, the research was good. I think there was a good amount of research. Again, I didn't um, see any publication. It's not like a poster presentation, but I think the research and the amount of time it was pretty impressive. Um, just another point though, I think that now that we're actually sitting here and talking about it and I think the more exposure we've had, sometimes I think from admissions perspective things can kind of start to look like like applicants are doing like a massive like shotgun approach of just like boom 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 let me hit all these things just for medical school mm -hmm. which unfortunately even if it's not what you're doing and you're just trying to you know find your place unfortunately that's sometimes what it looks like and like Sean was saying there's not really like a bigger picture embedded in all his activities even though there might be it wasn't like it doesn't show here maybe it's explain the personal statement but I think that might be a little bit of a con of just like this person's like just I mean it's good but it's not like top tiers are gonna be like yes there's a purpose to this and like it's right. kind of like a shotgun approach mm -hmm. right for me I look at this application I see solid GPA pretty pretty dang good GPA he had that little downward spiral thing when he went to UC which is unfortunately I think is gonna be looked down upon uh, I think when you're going to a competitive medical school and then you go to a competitive school and you show that your GPA kind of drops do that I think that's going to be seen pretty negatively uh, MCAT pretty dang solid great job on that 514 if you had maybe a few more points like 517 518 you would really be you know secure with your with your application um, but still pretty solid and then I think the main thing going on in this application is there, like they mentioned, is not anything that really pops or stands out, especially, uh, I mean, at least to us. Um, there's no real publications, no life-saving thing going on, or, or maybe you might be able to connect something with your personal statement, maybe there's a story behind you as an applicant, but this is how they initially screen your applications. And just from this initial screen, um, it looks very samey, very safe, very uh, standard application. So, for the one thing I'm going to leave on is, uh, and we'll move on to the next person, is I think this person might be set for what their goals are though. They're from Mississippi, they want to go to uh, Mississippi, their stats are kind of, I would think, aligned with uh, what, what they're uh, trying to do. And I think they have a pretty good chance of getting accepted somewhere this cycle. I think this person's in pretty good shape. I do think it'll be interesting to say, and I think we should do this for everyone, mm -hmm. would we admit them? And exactly. I would say, yes, they deserve to go to medical school. They mm -hmm. look like... I mean, my yeah, my medical school would have 1,000 kids. Yeah, that's the thing, though. But <laughs> like that, I, I that's what these people are trying so to argue with. You have to say yes or no. Okay, yeah. would we accept them in medical school? Yes. Yeah, I would also accept this, this student. Yeah, I would accept this student, given we see his personal statement is not... <laughs> just completely some kind no of no criminal activity yeah in, in exactly the record. <laughs> uh, or when his personal state was not bought from uh, what's that place that I bought it from uh, I reside in New York and my stats are as follows cumulative 3.5 science 3.29 no up or downward trends MCAT 495 and 503 the second time I applied to DO schools only last year but did not get in Clinical volunteering, 1,000, non-clinical, 750. Leadership, president, bioinformatics, chemistry, tutor, chemistry department awards, etc., etc. EMT, research assistant, no pubs, four posters. Letter recs are very strong. How does he know that? Uh, I don't know. A couple of things stand out to me. The first thing that jumps out to me are the stats. And I know a lot of people don't like stats, but the reality is they do matter. And I think the stats here aren't fantastic. Um, so, and the fact that you took the MCAT and then you retook it, and the fact that you applied and didn't get in an hour reapplying, I think that does show that there is some growth, but there hasn't been enough growth. Yeah, in terms of the extracurriculars and the research, um, those are good, but I think people's eyes are going to shift to those stats and that's going to be the limiting factor. I'd say because of the fact that he only applied to DO schools, I think he is aware of the stats. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good point too, yeah. Stats thing because 
otherwise you would apply MD so um, I think he is aware of that um, and unfortunately again I think that I think he has a good shot of getting into some DO school but I think he needs to show a little bit more in his extracurriculars to overcompensate for that stats that's lacking and um, also like Herman mentioned a little bit earlier being a reapplicant does kind of hurt your chances a little bit the thing about being a reapplicant is if you did not get in anywhere you applied last cycle there's definitely something that every single school saw something wrong with the application and going and hitting that reapplicant having that reapplicant written on your application it's just not a good look it's like trying to be hired at a job and knowing that this guy was not accepted anywhere else it's a uh, it's a bit of a blemish on your application for sure i think it's crappy though it's crappy for sure because a lot of people don't get in that first time yeah and, and it's not always like clear cut like something's a red flag right. a lot of times it's not a red flag some schools right. just you just miss the mark, you didn't apply to enough, etc. Yeah, sometimes et cetera. it's just luck. Yeah. You guys do know this is the MedRush channel. I'm going to keep it real with this person's application. Uh, my advice to this person is to look at deal schools that are recently opening, some that are just uh, that are brand new, accepting GPAs that are in like 2.8 range, really low MCATs, because uh, stats, stats do matter. And being that reapplicant, it's really not going to be a good look. I would think at this point in your life, you should look at other career choices. Um, if you're really desperate to become a doctor, look at the Caribbean, out of country, uh, mm -hmm. lots of other options. Check out our other videos, Secret Back Doors, etc. We have a lot of videos to help you out if you really want to be a doctor. Um, but the reality of the situation is this application is not looking too good unless you have an extraordinary story. You do something in the next couple of years, you apply a couple more times, uh, really put together a good application. But as it stands, this is probably going to be a reject for me. Yeah, I agree with that as well. And in terms of advice I would give, I would say that the MCAT score is something that you can improve on. Like people, when they start taking the MCAT practice test, they score like, what, a 490 or a 497. And with practice, with three months, six months, and even nine months or a year, you can raise that score if you're dedicated enough. Um, the GPA is harder because, you know, it's four or more years worth of um, weight to that, but the MCAT is something that with enough hard work, you can significantly improve that. And at 503, which I think his last score was at, I think there's a lot of room for growth there. So I would definitely work on improving that in addition to all the things Herman mentioned. But for now, I would say that it's definitely a reject for me. Yeah, I would also say that just keep in mind guys when we, as crappy as it does sound to reject someone, there are a bunch of people in line who have worked that work mm -hmm. to get up from, there's probably this same person who in another person or whatever I'm trying to say, but like who got their score up two, five, ten after a year of working hard or something, right. you know what I mean? So there, you have to kind of keep that in mind and yes, of course, if people are working hard, you want them to reap their benefits, but you have to keep in mind that there's other people who maybe deserve it a little 100%. bit more, at least from what they can see on paper. 100%. Uh, GPA 3.85, MCAT 516, 5,000 plus hours of research at a major hospital, middle author publication, three poster presentations, currently working on two more papers. I personally wouldn't count that, and I know they don't count working that. Working on two papers, yeah. They don't count, count that. Yeah. Um, also have 600 plus hours of research from undergrad. Um, clinical, 300 plus hours at the emergency department, blah, blah, blah food pantry, volunteering, um, worked 600 hours at a medically fragile home of intellectually and physically disabled individuals, Jeez. undergrad lab, TA for 80 hours, sports camp, 60 hours, was student athlete during all four years of my undergrad, three of which I was a captain for. What sport? I don't know. That matters a lot <laughs> that they didn't mention the That sport. does matter. So their in-state is Minnesota. Uh, they've got uh, Harvard on here, they've got Mayo. They've so I think that this is a pretty strong application. It looks like the stats are good. Um, the research, there's a lot of research. Um, there are a lot of extracurricular activities, that's good. I do think that they do, again, seem a little scattershot in terms of all aspects. Obviously, look at your personal statement, look at a ton of other things that we don't have access to. But for now, from what I see, I think you're good. The only thing I would say is that um, just like when people who have bad stats and bad, you know, um, extracurriculars and research, they still have a shot at getting into a good college. It also works the other way. If you have good stats and uh, good research extracurriculars, mm -hmm. there's still a shot that things don't work out your way. 
um, it's just a factor of luck and a ton of other things that come into play um, that are like behind the scenes. So yeah, in real life, I have known people who've had exceptional applications, like ones that I and even faculty have been like, wow, they should get into med school. They're awesome. They're doing great. They've hit every single mark that they need to hit, but they don't get into medical school. So I think that that kind of needs to be noted that that's a thing too. And while we could sit here and say, yes, we would hope this person gets accepted, that's not always the case. So some of you guys might be asking, how is it possible that this person with 3.9 super high MCAT doesn't get in? Well, the reality is the super high tier schools, the Harvards and Mayos, they're seeing a lot of good applicants. Ones that are all top of the line MCAT, top of the line GPA, top of the line research. So it's a fight to get in there. So it's a bit of luck to get into that. Um, and then when you go to the low tier schools, you might think, I have a 3.9, I have a really high MCAT, I'm gonna fly into this school. You have to think again, because these lower stat schools are thinking, this guy has a really high GPA and MCAT, he's never gonna come to our school, he'll be fine, just don't accept him and give him an interview. So you're kind of in that in-between of both schools, you're fighting for these spots, giving you actually less spots than someone that's middle of the road, 3.7, MCAT's kind of solid. And then back to this person's application really quickly, because that was becoming long-winded. I think this person has done a phenomenal job on their application. I would accept, great job, and I hope you get in somewhere. As to what all the people- dad? I know. <laughs> yeah, I would say that. Yeah, I agree. Oh, that's Starkey, Starkey, Starkey agrees, agrees as well. No, she agrees or disagrees? Disagrees. Okay. See, that's just, why you can't be too sure. You're going to have someone like that. Like, Starkey! So, um, this person is a California uh, resident. They have a 3.36511 MCAT and they want to apply to around 35 schools, including every single California school, 300 hours of research, one poster presentation, 34 leadership, um, co founded a nonprofit organization, um, 80 hours of shadowing, 200 volunteer. Um, yeah, I would say that this person is um, unfortunately one of the big cons is going to be being California. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that that is something to weigh. Uh, California has gotten really, really competitive over the years um, just because everyone wants to come to California. And even though we have a lot of schools, it's really hard to get in here. And um, I think that they would have a better shot probably in a, in a out of state school. For me, this application strikes me as one that a lot of people have. Like, mm -hmm. this is pretty similar, like a 3.3, 3.4-ish. So I think for this applicant, what strikes me, like, initially is I think a lot of people have a similar application. The GPA 3.3, the 3.4-ish, the 5, 10-ish MCAT, I think a lot of people have that. And the issue when it comes to high tier schools is differ differentiating yourself from those other applicants. So I think that might be a little hard from what I see here. Obviously read the personal statement all that. I know I emphasize that like multiple times, but you have to look at the whole application. But from what I see here, I think it looks a little bit generic, although everything does seem to be like, you have everything checkmarked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one thing to keep in mind though is that this is definitely we're giving it from the perspective of like probability or we're giving right. it from the perspective oh, of, course, yeah. of we're being a little harsher when it comes to being accepted. Like this person might get into a top tier school. Oh, 100%. Like, it's very possible. 100%. Um, and that does happen. It depends on a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. So we this is just the more probabilistic um, outcome and the more safe outcome when Herman says like apply to deal schools. Right. Like maybe you get into a really great like top 20 school. Right. So I just want to put that out there. But for me, I would probably accept this applicant. Yeah, I would probably, I probably, I would, I would probably not accept them in California, to be honest, because yeah. there's a lot of hardworking kids here. As hardworking as you may be, there's like thousands of kids who, unfortunately, might look better on paper, and you might have to compromise and go to a different state because of that discrepancy in your stats. Um, so I probably wouldn't accept you in California, but um, you probably do have a shot in an out-of-state school. Yeah. I mean, there's also tons of schools in California and that are looking for different things. Okay guys, so that is going to be it for our video. I really hope, or we really hope, you guys enjoyed. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to Med Bros if you have not already. For Please some... direct any hate towards yes. Instagram.com slash HarmanBH slash un or underscore underscore. Yes. yes. That's it. Uh, as long as all entitled comments, all <laughs> disrespectful comments. Uh, uh, definitely guys, this is what a lot of these people 
posting online we're asking for though. You guys are just posting the raw stats and we're just giving you what, what we think off the top. No hate, no anything. A lot of you guys' applications were amazing. Uh, that's gonna be it for our video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Later. Peace.